Hey, if you're watching this video, it's because you've clicked on the link to watch our worship service at the Presbyterian Church of Nevada. I'd just like to welcome you and uh, greet you on behalf of the church. My name is Adam Smith. I am the pastor uh, here at the church, and we're continuing on in our life and ministry together, even though we're sheltering in place and doing our best to protect and uh, love our neighbor as ourselves during this time of COVID-19. And we're so glad that you found us. We know that God has brought you here in some way, shape, or form, and we're just so glad and so thrilled that you're here. If you have any questions about the church, want to get to know us a little bit more, visit our website, pcnovato.org. Uh, we're in the process of creating an entirely new website, but right now, all of our information's on there. Again, welcome. Glad you're here. Let us worship together. God, your children speak many languages, but your gospel proclaims your love to all people in one heavenly voice. Make us messengers of the good news, that through the power of your spirit, all the world may unite in one song of praise. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Spirit, Spirit of gentleness, blow through the wilderness, calling and free. Spirit, Spirit of restlessness, stir me from placidness, wind, wind on the sea. You moved on the and I'm really happy I could be here and talk to you today. I wanted to tell you about a story that happened 2,000 years ago. So all of Jesus' followers were gathered up and Jesus said, I'm gonna promise you something. I promise that if you follow me, I will give you my Holy Spirit to live inside you. And that was a really, really special gift because Jesus was leaving earth and he wasn't gonna come back and physically be with them anymore. 
And so when he promised them that, it meant that he would never leave them and that they would never be alone because the Holy Spirit would be inside of them and give them the power to do things and live for him. And the amazing part of that story is that even though it happened 2,000 years ago, Jesus' promise is still true today. If we love Jesus and we follow Jesus, his Holy Spirit lives inside of us. And the Holy Spirit gives us the power to live for Jesus. You know, when I think of the Holy Spirit, it reminds me of a flashlight. I'm sure all of you guys have flashlights at home, right? You know what this is. When it's dark outside and you need to see, you use a flashlight, right? Most of us do. Well, what do you think happens if I push this power button? Let's try it and find out. Nothing's happening. Isn't it supposed to turn on? I wonder why it's not doing it. Maybe if I bang it a bunch, it'll work. What do you guys think I should try? Nope, still not working. I wonder why not? I just bought this. It should be working. You know what? I think I forgot to put the batteries in it. Hang on. Alrighty, I got a battery. Let's try this. Okay, let's see. <gasps> That's right, it worked. I forgot the battery. It's pretty important that a flashlight has batteries, right? It can't work without it. No matter how much I tried to make it work, if I hit it, if I shook it around, nothing is gonna make a flashlight work without the batteries. Batteries remind me of the power of the Holy Spirit. In the same way that it, the batteries make a flashlight shine, the Holy Spirit gives us the power to shine Jesus' love to those around us. The Bible says that by ourselves, it's really hard to live the life that God intended. And I know I struggle with it sometimes, but we know that the Holy Spirit is inside of us. And that's amazing that Jesus' promise 2,000 years ago is still true today because he loves us so much. He wanted to always be with us, even though he was leaving earth. He wanted to be with us and show us his love. Alrighty guys, let's go ahead and say our prayer. I want you to close your eyes and bow your heads, okay? Dear God, thank you that you have given us the power of the Holy Spirit. Please fill us up each day with the Holy Spirit that we would have the power to live for Jesus and let his light shine in our lives. Give us eyes to see where you're working in our lives and help us join you. We love you so much. Thank you for always being with us. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's children said, amen. Alrighty, guys. I'll see you next time. Today comes from Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 6 and 12. This is the word of God. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem, and at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? Got my door open here in the church, and it is a beautiful, beautiful day on this uh, Holy Spirit Day on this Pentecost Sunday. And it's good to see each and every one of you. I've got you all on gallery view right now. So I'm looking at all your wonderful faces, Holy Spirit filled people as you are. And it's good to see each and every one of you. I have to confess though, when I was growing up, I didn't know much about the Holy Spirit. In fact, I didn't hear very much about the Holy Spirit growing up Presbyterian. In fact, we, we called Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost, and I only heard it during the Apostles' Creed, and my parents said that ghosts weren't real, so I didn't know what to make of that. 
So I didn't know a lot about the Holy Spirit. And the only thing I did know was what I saw at my friend's churches. I remember going to a friend's church one time and seeing people fall over, passing out. Didn't know if they needed help or what, but I was told later they were possessed by the Holy Spirit. I saw miraculous healings. I saw what they told me was speaking in tongues, which to me sounded like a lot of gibberish. And then somebody else would translate what they were saying. And then I saw people, this has terrified me as a Presbyterian, dancing. They were dancing in worship. That's not normal. I'd never seen that before in my life. And it was because they were moved by the Holy Spirit. So I really had no idea what the Holy Spirit was or who the Holy Spirit was. In fact, my impression of the Holy Spirit was the Holy Spirit terrified me. I was kind of afraid of the Holy Spirit. And as Presbyterians, we're, we're intellectual kinds of folks. We like to dig in deep to the Word and find out what God is saying. So this whole experiential side of God that, that we see is, is just scary. But over the years, I've come to fall in love with the Holy Spirit. I've come to see God anew through the Holy Spirit. I love Sydney's analogy this morning batteries in a flashlight it's pretty good it's pretty good sally and sydney always come up with really good stuff but i think there's a lot of truth in that that the holy spirit somehow fills us up somehow makes us whole where we fall short so that we can do what god empowers us to be able to do let's think about it for a minute though let's think about holy spirit what if what if there was no holy spirit what if it was just God, the creator, and Jesus, the redeemer? Well, you have a pretty big hole in your faith, don't you? If God just created everything and then redeemed everything, what, well, what about, what about life right now? What about what you do in your life? What about what you say in your life? What about how you lead your life? Without Holy Spirit, there's nothing there. If you've already been redeemed, Holy Spirit is about the here and now. It's about God who chose to be with us, to say that our lives aren't meaningless and arbitrary, but that they make a difference, but that God has intentions to be with us and guide us to be about God's good and glorious purposes in the world. We're a part of it. We're not left out. We're not sitting on the sidelines. We're here. We're now. We're empowered by God's Spirit to be the church of Jesus Christ. That's why Pentecost is such a big deal. Because your life matters. Because my life matters. Because God's not done with us yet. And has plans for us. John Calvin once wrote, as long as Christ remains outside of us and we are separated from him, all that he has suffered and done for the salvation of the human race remains useless and of no value to us and for us. If Christ remains outside of us, and that's where the Holy Spirit comes in, that Christ doesn't remain outside of us, the Holy Spirit brings Christ within us. Christ makes his home within us. The Holy Spirit breathes the life of Christ in our bodies, in our lives, every day. It's about connecting us to God again. It's a theme we see throughout scripture over and over and over again. It's God reconnecting God's self with us, about God building relationship with us. We see it explicitly in the prodigal father story where God, where this father figure sacrifices everything just to be with his kids, his rotten kid that runs off and takes his inheritance and blows it, and his good kid that sticks around. All, all that matters to the father is just being with his kids. And we see this this togetherness, this reconnecting play out over and over and over again in Scripture. It seems to be what God, what matters to God. We see it when, Mo when Moses is given the Ten Commandments because it lays out 
uh, a framework for which people can live together, can be and reconnect with God and each other together. Then we see Jesus come into the world to reconnect us with God from the brokenness of our own sinful lives, to die for us. And now the Holy Spirit comes in to bring us back together yet again. It's about relationship. It's about togetherness. And Pentecost is just another reminder of what matters to God in our lives and in this world. We matter. Our togetherness matters to be with God. That's who God is. That's what God does. We see it in the wind, the imagery of the wind in our story that reminds us of creation and how the winds blew over, the breath of God blew over the waters. And now that same breath is breathing life into people again, making people whole, bringing people together so that they can hear one another, even though they're speaking different languages. We have these tongues of fire, which is a strange image to think about, but it reminds us it reminds us of the Tower of Babel and how languages were dispersed, and now all of a sudden, they're brought back together. People understand one another. It's togetherness again. God is, through the Holy Spirit, bringing together, uniting, and God is overcoming barriers and breaking down walls in order to make that happen. And this is where I think the power of the Pentecost story is. It's in this unifying nature of God. Now, what I had a great sermon planned out today. In fact, I, I changed it all late last night in my head and wrote it down this morning. Because I think the Holy Spirit does have something to speak to us about this morning, here and now. Many of you, all of you, are probably aware of recent issues, recent ongoings in our country. You're aware of the systemic racism that's reared its ugly head again. Again, it seems to keep happening. You've seen the backlash, the rioting, the violence that's taken place after that as well. And if you're like me, you realize this isn't right. Something's happening here. What is going on? Because what we're seeing, we're realizing that what's going on is not of God. This isn't God. This division that we experience in our culture, this separation we feel from each other, this is not how God works. If anything, in the Holy Spirit, we realize this isn't how God is. God wants to build bridges and bring us together, knock over walls of separation, not build them not keep us divided. And yet that's what we see. So I, I've been asking, and maybe you're asking the same thing, where, where is God? What does the Holy Spirit have to say with what's going on in our country right now? How do we find the Holy Spirit? I know in men's group, I pop in as, as often as I can. They're talking about the Holy Spirit right now too. And one of the questions they wrestle with is, how do you know if it's the Holy Spirit or not that's talking? How do you know if you see the Holy Spirit when you see something going on? How do you see the Holy Spirit at work when the Holy Spirit is so immaterial, so mysterious almost? The person of the Trinity you can't quite grasp onto. So I've wondered about that in the middle of what's going on in our country right now. Where is the Holy Spirit in the middle of this? Where is she at work? Where is he guiding us, the church, to be and do in the middle of all this? Because we want answers. We want to know what to do. That's where I think a lot of Christians get stuck when it comes to these issues, these really big issues, is we know we need to do something, but we don't know what to do. We have no idea where to start and how to begin to address racism that is embedded within the systems of our country because they are there and have been built up over generations. They don't just, you can't confront them like Jim Crow racism because it's not the same thing. You can't just stop it and pull it out and stamp it out. It's much more pervasive 
and, and elusive and hard to get to. So let's stick with scripture this morning and look at our text a little bit deeper because I think God has something for us this morning. I think we can take a lot from our Pentecost story because what we see here is God, the bridge builder. We see the Holy Spirit, this great unifier who is building relationship, providing a common language among people so that people can communicate, so that people can hear one another. The Holy Spirit is reminding us, all of us, of the image of God that we all bear. It's not an us versus them kind of world. The Holy Spirit reminds us that all of us bear this image of God, every single one of us. And to think other of somebody else is not of God. We're really good at othering people in our society and making an us versus them, at demonizing some bad guy. We see it in our politics. We see it in our ideologies. We like black and white obstacles. We like to make somebody an enemy, a target. And that's become embedded in our culture too. But that's not how God works. The Holy Spirit reminds us of our interconnectedness because of God. That we are responsible for one another. That we are called to love one another. Because that's who we are because of the Holy Spirit within us. As Christians, that's who we are. I think if we were to read farther on in our passage, skip over Peter's speech. Nothing against Peter. I love Peter. And he has a great speech in here. Read it. It's fantastic. But if we skip right past that, we, we see this image of a community. We see this image of a community of believers who love one another, who care for one another, who are giving, selling their possessions to take care of one another. You know what we don't see? We don't see greed. We don't see self-idolatry. We don't see racism. We don't see prejudice. We don't see war and violence. We don't see apathy or indifference. We see people giving of themselves sacrificially like Christ to be together. The imagery for me that stands out more than anything else is sitting down and eating meals together in this community picture. And yeah, there, we could talk about traditional values of eating at the table, but I think the symbolism of eating together is that intimacy of sitting down at the table with, with people you like and people you don't like at once and valuing who they are in Christ, knowing that they are children of God. You don't have to agree or get along, but you're at the table together, sharing that intimate moment that mimics the Last Supper, that mimics that holy meal, that mimics the, the final supper in the kingdom of God together when we're all around the table with Christ. The world can look like that. It's a vision for the church to see what it is to exist in love. To live out the Holy Spirit's call of reconnecting with one another. To be with one another together. Not erecting walls. Not continuing to separate each other. Not to continue to other each other. But to be with and for one another. Like brothers and sisters. You know what the Holy Spirit reminds me of? Spider-Man. Definitely Spider-Man. If any of you guys know what I'm talking about, well, let me explain because you probably have no idea. The comic book Spider-Man. So Peter Parker is Spider-Man. I know, I gave it away. There you go. If you've never seen it before, Peter Parker is Spider-Man. As Peter Parker, his uncle is shot and he's dying and, and they're talking together and Peter's there with him. And what he says and he tells Peter is, is with, with great power comes great responsibility. 
And I always love that. I love that imagery that yes, the more that you have, the more empowered you are, the more responsibility you have, not just for yourself, for other people. And I think the Holy Spirit is a lot like that. I think the Holy Spirit is this gift, this gift from God that shows how much God loves us. And at the same time, empowers us to great and wonderful things. And because of that, it comes along with this great responsibility that we have as Christians. We are loved to the nth degree, and therefore we are responsible to the nth degree to share that love with others. Because that's who we are in Christ. That's who we are because of the Holy Spirit that has been indwelled within us. We are called to love extravagantly because that's how we are loved. The wind that is the Spirit both breathes life within to us and also blows over walls of division and separation through us. We're a part of it with God. So when I think about the world today and the Holy Spirit's activity, I think we see the Holy Spirit wherever we find grace and love. We see evidence of God at work. But then in those dark places of racism, of prejudice, of division, that's where the Holy Spirit is too trying to build those bridges, trying to mend things, trying to bring people together again. And the thing is, where should the church be? The Holy Spirit dwells within us. It's in those hard places of separation and division where the church needs to be first and foremost because we have the message of grace to share with the world, a message that we all need to hear over and over and over again. We are the body of Christ. Christ who, when he saw injustice, flipped over the money changers' tables and said, no, this is not the way it's supposed to be. Jesus who stood up for the vulnerable and the poor and the least of these, and stood with them, and died for them. That's the powerful message of grace in the church. And that's the powerful message we have to share with the world. How and what that looks like, that's the harder thing. What can PCN do as a church? That's another hard question. What can we do? But I think it begins with talking about it, confronting it where we see it, but it doesn't stop there either. We talk about it. We gain knowledge about it. We listen for the Holy Spirit. And then we act. And then we become the body of Christ, continue to be the body of Christ in whatever form that discernment takes. My friends, I, for one, have fallen in love with the Holy Spirit, not just because of the promise of God with me. That's a huge part of it. But because of how God has empowered me to be about what God does and empowered you to be about this holy work, this absolute holy work as we have hope in the coming kingdom of God. Because for us, that kingdom is coming. We get to be a part of it. And that is such a great joy. My friends, have a wonderful Pentecost Sunday. You are all a blessing. Continue to listen to the Holy Spirit in your lives. Know that we love you here in the church, and that we will continue to be the body of Christ, listening for the Holy Spirit every step of the way, and we'll be here with and for one another. It's in Christ's name that we say these things. Amen.
All right, my friends, we have a very special uh, opportunity to, uh, today to hear from Mike Smiley from Gilead House, who has joined us for worship and is going to share a little bit about what's going on over there and a little bit more about Gilead House if you don't know much, much about it. So, Mike, I'm going to uh, try to spotlight you here, and that should put you up front and center. There you are. I think you're on. You got to unmute yourself, Mike. You're muted. Uh, you would think by now um, I would learn how to work soon, but um, uh, every day is an adventure. Well, thank you to uh, to Pastor Adam for for this opportunity to be part of the service today, and in particular your comments. I think your comments were uh, very uh, thought provoking, uh, particularly at a time that we are where we are in the country today. Uh, I'd also like to thank the, the mission committee for their decision to share uh, the offering today with, with Gilead House and to really all of the members of, of PNC, uh, PCN for all of your many, many, many years of support to Gilead House. Uh, I'm actually sitting in the apartment at our main house uh, that has uh, Pacific uh, Presbyterian Church of Nevada's name on the, on the door. So uh, this is the the uh, the apartment that uh, you guys have helped us with uh, your generosity is so much appreciated by by all of the uh staff and 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 moms here at the at uh, gilead house and we're so grateful for your support uh, when carolyn uh, garens first talked to me about today's service uh, we certainly didn't have zoom in mind <laughs> uh, so it's just a reflection of uh, how much has changed over the last few years uh, for those of you who don't know uh, that much about Gilead House, uh, we continue to be a place of hope for homeless moms and their kids, a place where uh, they can find shelter and support while they're working on improving their lives and really addressing uh, many traumas that have impacted their life um, and have caused most of them to lose everything they have. Um, many of them have just um, become homeless uh, for unimaginable reasons um, and are looking to find a second chance in life. Uh, someone asked me the other day how Gilead House was uh, was making it through the, the pandemic. Um, and the first thing that came to mind were the, the opening words of uh, Charles Dickens' story, A Tale of Two Cities, uh, that it was the best of times, it was the worst time. Uh, the pandemic, uh, happened and the shelter in place went into effect. This has had a huge impact on all of the families here um, in every way you can imagine, financially, emotionally, socially, mentally. Uh, all of the moms who live here at Gilead House uh, work hourly jobs uh, and because of the shelter in place, obviously they weren't able to go to their jobs and so they weren't able to, uh, to make any money in whatever monies they had accumulated, uh, they saw going away very quickly. And that added to a huge amount of anxiety and depression uh, that just as they thought they were making steps forward, they all of a sudden saw them stay, uh, taking steps back. Uh, for us as a program, uh, we, were, we had to cancel all of our life skills classes, uh, our Chasing Hope classes, those classes that we offer our moms to help them. Uh, improve their lives because we couldn't bring them together into a safe, uh, safe location. Uh, it's had a huge impact on our kids. Um, all of them um, have struggle and uh, they struggle in school. And now that school is out, uh, we were extraordinarily concerned that uh, they would fall even further behind. Um, and uh, and that's been a big worry for us. And and with school. School really becomes their routine. Uh, and for all of you who have kids, you know that kids do best when they have a routine. They have some schedule they can live to. And now with school out, that became very difficult to, uh, to deal with. Uh, but at the same time, the, the uh, pandemic really has brought out the best of people. Um, and shortly after all of this started to happen, we started to see a groundswell of support. Uh, some from people uh, like members of, of Presbyterian Church in Nevada who have known us and worked with us for many, many years. Others from complete strangers uh, who heard of us in some way and decided to, uh, to, to help out in some fashion. 
And we began to see uh, gift cards showing up and we began to see um, groceries uh, showing up and we began to see books and stuffed animals and face masks and all of the things uh, that you would expect to, um, you know, that you would hope to see at a, at a time like this. We, and we even found uh, some bringing to us the single most valuable and hard to find object in a pandemic and that being toilet paper, <laughs> uh, which somebody's going to have to explain to me at one point in time as to why that's such an important thing these days. Uh, but out of this, um, we've just seen the most uh, amazing, the most amazing of people uh, who are willing to uh, support others, uh, some that they know and some that they don't know. One of the things that challenges our families the most is change. Um, and the pandemic has certainly brought plenty of that uh, to us. So our goal from the very start was to find ways that we could create as much normalcy as possible in the lives of our families here. Uh, during the early days, because most of the moms didn't have the money to buy food, um, that uh, uh, required us to stand in hours or stand in lines for hours and hours at Costco and other places. Uh, to buy plenty of food that we could distribute it to our moms to help them get over this uh, initial uh, time when, uh, between times when they um, weren't having money come in but before they, they uh, started to, to find other sources. Um, we also um, began to try to find ways that we could bring our, our uh, life skills classes back on. Um, and we got all of our moms hooked up with computers so that we could then offer our life skills classes uh, remotely. Uh, one of the new classes uh, that we thought was important uh, was a class on meditation, just to try and calm their minds. Uh, and if you truly want an experience, you try to try a meditation class by Zoom. That's uh, quite the way to do it. <laughs> um, for our kids, uh, and I have to give our program director a huge amount of credit here. Uh, she has uh, established an online tutoring program for our kids so that we could ensure that the kids didn't fall further behind uh, because of all of this. And with support from volunteer tutors from as far away as Long Island, New York, if you can imagine it, um, we've had the most amazing group of people helping our kids um, a lot of these have been connecting with their schools to find out what programs they've been working on. Um, others, it's just listening to the kids read to them or us reading to them if they haven't been able to read. Uh, so all of these things uh, have really helped us to bring back a degree of normalcy to the program. And just last week, we began to take some steps to identify uh, how we might go about bringing in some new families uh, into Gilead House. And so all in all, I think things are starting to look a, a tiny bit more normal again. Uh, when I first heard that uh, Presbyterian Church of Nevada was, was, was offering this uh, a, a wonderful gift to us, uh, I got together with the, dis uh, with the staff to discuss how best we could use this money. Um, and what we've come up with uh, is to use the money to help fund uh, summer camp for our kids. Uh, with the summer camps in Marin reopening, uh, albeit with certain safety uh, restrictions, uh, we really can't think of a better opportunity to get our kids safely back into the community, get them back out with kids of their own age, where they can start to see that life goes on, that there are other people suffering and uh, wanting to get out just as much as they do. So this will give both our moms and our kids a break from the strains of being so close together physically uh, over the past several months to get them back out in the fresh air. Just in closing, I'd like to just say that I realize these are very times that we're living in. Uh, and the fact that each of you, both individual as members of, of the church, as well as the church itself, are thinking of others, uh, at what's got to be a continuing time of worry for everyone, uh, speaks volumes to me about your kindness and your compassion. Um, and it's the generosity of spirit shown by so many during these times that I the best about humanity. 
And I know that it will be what helps us all get through this current crisis together. So thank you again for all that you guys have done for us through the years. Uh, please stay safe and, and God bless you. Thanks so much, Mike. We really appreciate you taking your time to come out and talk to us today. Friends, just a reminder, a portion of our Pentecost offering, it is Pentecost Sunday that we, we take year after year, we'll go to Gilead House, House and help pay for those scholarships for those kids to go to, uh, to camp this year. So just keep that in mind. And, and you know, there's always a, a number of ways to give. You can give online and specify that way, or you can use your envelope that you were probably given uh, with your offering envelopes for the Pentecost offering and, and utilize that as well. All right, friends, thanks so much. And Mike, thank you again so much for being here with us. Thank you a lot. Friends, let us go to the Lord in prayer. As a reminder, uh, you'll be on mute from the majority of time, but at periodic uh, opportunities, we'll take you off of mute. So just be aware that you'll be um, asked to pray out loud and, uh, and uh, there's nothing you need to do, we'll manage all the muting and unmuting. So again, friends, let's come to the Lord in prayer. Holy Spirit, creator, in the beginning you moved over the waters. From your breath, all creation drew life. Without you, life turns to dust. Holy Spirit power, you came as fire to Jesus' disciples. You gave them voice before the rulers of the world. Holy Spirit sanctifier, you created us as children of God. You make us the living temple of your presence. You intercede within us with sighs too deep for words. Holy Spirit, life giver, you guide us and make holy the church you create. True and only light, from whom comes every good gift, send your spirit into our lives with the power of a mighty wind. Holy Come, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Open the horizons of our minds by the flame of your wisdom. Loosen our tongues to show your praise. For only in your spirit can we voice your words of peace. Come, Holy Spirit. Set aflame the whole church with the fire of your spirit. Unite us to stand in the world as a sign of your love. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, rain upon our dry and dusty lives. Wash away our sin and heal our wounded spirits. Kindle within us the fire of your love to burn away our apathy. O triune God, Father, Son, Spirit, receive these prayers. Lord, we lift up so much to you. And Lord, you know everything that we want to lift up to you, even before we say it. And yet you give us this opportunity to voice it aloud, to hear us, and we're assured that you will. And so today we lift up the Peace USA missionaries that we support, but all of the missionaries all over, for the work that they do to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. We pray for the missionaries who are here with us in worship. And we give thanks to all that the Holy Spirit has empowered them to do. To Jeff Pinar, who continues trips into Juarez to provide supplies and to help care for the orphans. We give you thanks for Kimmy Prawn's 26th birthday yesterday. Oh, what a youngster. What a joy that she is to her family and friends and to all of us. And we give you thanks for her life. Lord, we pray for Candy Blomquist, whose cancer has returned. We pray for Mike Smiley, for all the work that he does and all the other workers at Gilead House who serve people in our midst, who are being the hands and feet of Christ in all that they do. When we pray for all the families at Gilead House too, because Lord, we know that you're with them. We pray for Bruce Staley, who uh, ended up having to have cataract surgery again, and pray for a quick healing for him. And Lord, we pray for our country at this time. 
We pray for this time where we feel divided from one another, where things seem to go in the wrong direction time and again. We pray that we will begin to listen and follow after the Holy Spirit, who is the great uniter in your name, who teaches us to see the image of Godness in one another, who teaches us to treat one another with dignity and respect, who reveals to us ways to stand up for injustice, to stand up for those who are weak, who are vulnerable, who have been cast out, who are victims of racism and prejudice. And Lord, we also pray for the police in our nation too. We pray for all those who seek, who are the lawgivers and those who seek to protect us. Lord, bring us together. Bring us together in this time. Lord, we pray all these things. We know and trust God that you're always with us in cold and in warmth in darkness and in light, in every season and in every moment of our lives, you hold us all in your loving embrace, and you promise to never, ever let us go. Trusting indeed that you are always there, we pray to you now as your son taught us, praying together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Everlasting.
Friends, it has been wonderful to have you here in, in worship today. As we go out into the world, back into our sheltering in place, but as things are beginning to lift and restrictions are starting to uh, go by the wayside, continue to listen for the Holy Spirit in your midst. Continue to look for places where God is building bridges, where God is connecting us, where God is tearing down walls of separation and division where God is equipping us to be the body of Christ. And I receive this benediction. God knows not only your name, but every hair on your head. So in all things, be a mirror and reflect Christ's compassion, grace, love, and mercy to all. And all of God's children say together, amen. Amen. Friends.